Dawn Alexa Dunn here and today I want to talk about how to prepare for when you are attending festivals and conventions as an author and you're going to be on panels and programming there. Actually being on the panels is such a huge topic that I'm gonna save it for a separate video all like the do's and don'ts and best practices of speaking on the panels but this is all about prep, what you should do before the event, what you should expect when you get there socially and otherwise, and some of those like right before your panel, prep things that you can do so you feel kind of calm and measured and ready and hopefully as kind of zen as possible. In this video, I'm offering good tips for you, especially if you have anxiety, social anxiety, or are just severely introverted as so many of us are. Because the thing about festivals and conventions and events that you end up needing to do or getting to do as an author is that they are overwhelming, intimidating, and they can also be exhausting. So I'm going to tell you some of my best tips and the personal experiences I've had for preparing for these events. I've actually just returned from a whirlwind of events. In July, I did San Diego Comic-Con. Before that, I did Denver Comic-Con. And just this past week, I did Dragon Con, Decatur Book Fest, and BookNet Fest. So I'm fresh and full of ideas. And that's what made me decide now is the time to make this video, because I'm just like buzzing and ready to go. So first, to prepare ahead of time. It's pretty standard. You should be receiving information on the panels that a, an event wants you to be on ahead of time. If you're traditionally published, this is usually going to be coming through your publicist, though if you arrange for attending the event yourself, which for example I did with DragonCon, you will get that directly from the event. It's not always that far ahead of time. Sometimes it's only a week or two weeks before an event. So I know it can be stressful like, oh, what is the panel? But you will eventually get that information and it'll vary kind of the amount of information you'll get. Like sometimes you're just going to get a panel name and a description or I've also just gotten panel names before. But in a best case scenario, you're going to be introduced to your moderator and they're going to give you the questions ahead of time. You're gonna know who's on the panel, etc. So part of preparation is asking for that if they don't send it to you or if you do get it organically, going over it, thinking about something that you can say with each question and then rehearse what you're going to say, which sounds ridiculous and you don't have to practice or rehearse every time, but especially when you're thinking about your first event or really any event where you're just feeling nervous. You can practice in front of a camera. You can get a friend to listen to you, like have them pretend to be the moderator and you can practice with them. Yes, it's going to feel awkward, but the pros, you know, in the industry, authors who do events all the time do end up having kind of canned answers, things that come to them easily that they haven't necessarily rehearsed, but they've said so often about their book that it kind of comes out. So practice that. It could just be writing it out ahead of time as well. These two things are just to reduce your anxiety a little bit if you can. There will of course be situations where you aren't quite as prepared, but deep breaths, it's going to be okay. You're usually put on panels that are themed to your work or who you are as an author, and they don't usually throw too much at you that you can't handle. And if you are worried about a panel topic, you can always push back, say, oh, I don't think I'm appropriate for this panel, or could I see what the questions are before I agree to be on it. Next for prep is packing, things that you're going to want to take with you. First of all, if you can theme your outfits or your makeup or your handbag or what have you to your book or your author brand, do that. It's fun, it's memorable, and you will get compliments. I have an assortment of space dresses that I take to events and I wear on panels and they're always a big hit. I also then sometimes theme my makeup just because it's fun for me. It's hardly a must do, but it's a nice bonus. Next, you're going to want to pack your swag. This is anything that you want to give out, and a good one to have is bookmarks. This is why I highly advise authors to order bookmarks. They're pretty cheap premiums, and they're perfect for events, especially book events. Everyone loves a good bookmark. So pack bookmarks, nothing crazy. I usually travel with 50 to 100, and I always come back with plenty, but you wanna have more just in case. You're also going to want to have business cards. It comes up more often than you think 
think that you meet other authors, you meet industry professionals, or even just really enthusiastic readers, and you want to give them your business card so they can get in touch with you. So it's good to have a stock of business cards. Don't go crazy. I ordered 50 Moo cards last year before my book came out, and I'm only just running out of cards. So it's not like you need a thousand business cards, but it's always good to have a supply of them on you when you go to these events. And you're going to want to bring a copy of your book so that when you're on panels, you can set it in front of you on the table. It doesn't always happen organically, like if you're the only author on a panel, but on most author panels, it's great to have your book with you because audience members aren't necessarily going to remember your name, your full name, and your book title from the beginning of the panel intros. But if it's sitting in front of you, they can go, I like them, they're funny, or their book sounds really cool. I see it right in front of me. I've got the cover like churning in my brain and I'm going to write down the title of this book. So that helps you with sales essentially in the long term. Also, before you go, if this is a popular standard book event, ask in your debut group or other author groups that you are in if anyone is also attending the same event. I highly recommend, if that is the case, to arrange for some kind of meetup at the event as early as possible, especially in your debut group. This is because you can sometimes go to these events and you don't really know anyone. Like you kind of know people maybe by face or name or book, but you can end up at these events without any close friends essentially and then you feel like a total awkward panda. And what's nice about coordinating a meetup ahead of time, especially with members of your debut class, is it's a great icebreaker. You can go, oh, hi, it's so nice to meet you. And then you have someone to do things with at the event and you don't feel quite as alone. Now on to at the event. And most of this has to do with social stuff because seriously, the biggest thing that I think is unexpected when it comes to events is how socially isolating or socially awkward or just frustrating or nerve wracking they can be. It's always better than you think it is, by the way. Like, you're going to be very nervous ahead of time and you'll even have awkward panel moments at the event. But if you bear some of these things that I'm going to tell you in mind, <sighs> deep breaths, it will be okay. And the number one first thing I want to say to you is, you have to be okay with being alone at times or even a lot of the time at certain events. It's not always organic to run into other people, especially if you don't know people. And so to be perfectly honest, like at the Decatur Book Fest, I spent a lot of time alone in my hotel room. It helped that I was on deadline, so I certainly had something to do, but I basically took the social pressure off myself to feel bad that I spent Thursday night alone in my hotel room. It was before the event had started, I didn't know anyone, and I hadn't planned any meetups. So you know what, there's nothing wrong with taking some of that introvert charge time and just being by yourself. But also, you need to be brave and show up to things and introduce yourself to people. It's the bravery of agreeing to go to that meetup. It's the bravery of there's a party. So often these things have parties that you're invited to and it's going even though you don't know anyone and introducing yourself to strangers. This can pay off wonderfully because just one moment of being brave and saying hi can introduce you to people and then you have people to, you know, touch base with and spend time with throughout the rest of the event. But don't latch on too aggressively or quickly to new friends or friend groups at events. Yes, you want to find, you know, dinner companions and what have you, but you have to kind of be very circumspect and read the social cues, especially if you are kind of joining a established social circle of, you know, people who already know each other. Like kind of get a sense of the vibe, go to some things, you know, if you're invited, but like don't go overboard of like, hey, here's my number, text me when you're doing something, because it can get just really awkward and you can violate kind of social cues and I'm probably making you nervous, but it's just, I'm just telling you to be chill. Make new friends, but they don't have to be your new best friends. And to that end, my next piece of advice, honestly, is just to take it easy. A lot of these events can be super overwhelming. You can be tightly scheduled on panels and what have you. So don't like freak out that you're not invited to a ton of extra things or you don't have a completely full book social schedule because trust me, you're going to be thankful for the evening where you have nothing after dinner or the three hours between your panel commitments when you can go back to your hotel room or go to the green room and just kind of sit and be 
quiet. Those moments of quiet and rest and break are going to get you through the event in one piece from like a mental health and exhaustion standpoint because these events are so overwhelming and exhausting. Don't overschedule yourself and take breaks. To that end, get enough sleep. It is very, very important to get enough sleep and be decently well rested. Like we always kind of skimp on sleep when we go to these things. And especially if you're coming from another time zone, there's jet lag to factor in. But please get a minimum of five hours sleep because being exhausted and not having enough sleep really sets you up poorly. You're going to be cranky. You're not going to be as sharp on panels. And also this means you have to eat regularly. One thing that always surprises me and surprises others is how easy it is to forget to eat, especially when you are more alone, you don't have as you know many people to go eat with and it can be awkward to eat by yourself or just you're busy or you wanna sleep in because you wanna get enough sleep. It can just be very easy to skip meals and you really shouldn't do that because next thing you know, you haven't eaten in 12 hours and you're just a wreck. So keep a snack in your bag. Be sure to kind of don't overschedule yourself so you can fit in appropriate proper meal breaks and so on. Eating is really, really important. And then just a general con rule is don't forget to shower. That's another thing that people forget to do. And that's just, it's nice to shower and, and be relatively clean, right? Now, before panels, right before panels, be sure to arrive early. I recommend at least a half hour early. This is so you can orient yourself in the space, introduce yourself to the moderator, meet the other authors. Some events will like specifically tell you to show up 30 minutes early, but some don't control your schedule or tell you where to be. So just follow that rule of thumb, show up early. This is also to help your nerves. So you have a little bit of time to decompress before you go on. This is also the time to review panel questions or ask the moderator for them if you weren't provided them way ahead of the event, just so that you have a little bit of time to think, okay, this is what I'm going to talk about on this panel. If it's early in the morning, make sure you're caffeinated. This also goes in with the get enough sleep, but seriously, leave enough time in terms of getting up and getting to your panel to get your morning coffee. This is really essential for me before panels, and so I'm communicating that to you in case coffee is also important to you. I also advise bringing paper and a pen or utilizing it if it is provided to you because especially when you're on panels where you're like literally at a table, I find that jotting down like ideas, like keywords of things that I think of while other people are talking or things that I think of if I have the questions in front of me can really help me feel centered in terms of the panel. Like if I blank in the moment, it doesn't matter because I can glance down at my notepad and go, oh, that keyword, that's what I wanted to say. I find that having pen and a paper really helps me feel centered on a panel and then have any other table supplies that you need. I always make sure I have a lip gloss on the table, uh, partly because reapplying my lip gloss is a nervous habit, but also because my lips get dry. So I like to have my lip gloss, a glass of water, they'll provide water usually. And then I keep my phone with me. Um, you shouldn't check your phone during a panel, but do I compulsively check my phone for the time on panels? Yes, I do. It's a really terrible habit, but it's one of those weird compulsive things that I do. I do this in my normal life. Even when I'm not on a panel, I compulsively check the time on my phone. Um, but it is another thing that helps keep me centered, keeping track of time. It's a bad habit. I shouldn't do it and you definitely shouldn't do it. But I also just keep my phone with me because I just feel more centered if I know that my phone is in my bag next to me or I have it on the table. I put it face side down so I'm not distracted by notifications. Last but certainly not least on the topic of events, I want to talk about troubleshooting some kind of tricky, potentially tricky situations. The first one is Mean Girls. They can be mean guys too. You might end up in a situation at an event where someone isn't very nice to you. Honestly, it sucks. Sometimes it's on a panel where you, someone's kind of being condescending. It could be you meet them and they're just kind of cold or, you know, you do get ditched socially, like, and you realize, oh, I'm not in the cool kids club. They don't want to hang out with me. It sucks. And so I'm telling you to feel your feelings and warning you that you might feel feelings. And seriously, I hope this isn't making any of you go, oh God, I'm not going to do events. It's not that bad. I'm just warning you that it does happen. It has happened to me. And I've been like, oh, I feel crappy, especially when you're the new kid on the block, you're a debut. Sometimes more experienced authors might not even realize that they're being intimidating. So it's not just the, oh, they're mean. It can be intimidation tactics, all sorts of things. It could even just be 
this is kind of a subtopic, you feeling like an idiot on a panel. This might happen, you'll be okay, trust me. But um, sometimes it does happen where you, you get on a panel and it's not great and you feel bad and like an idiot. First of all, 90% of the time it's not as bad as you thought it was. Like talk to, if you know anyone who was in the audience, like a friend, ask them what they thought and usually you did better than you thought. But um, just feel your feelings. Don't mire too deep in your feelings. Don't let them ruin an event for you or you know put you off events, but warning you that this can happen. The other thing that can happen in terms of feelings is what I call bookseller feelings. Occasionally you'll go to an event and you will discover that they don't have your book. It sucks. It happens. It happened to me. Because it's just this moment of being like, you just feel kind of insignificant. Like, oh, I thought I was cool enough to be here, but I'm not cool enough for the bookseller to have my book. I will say, if you're going to official book festivals, anything where you have been officially invited, they're going to have your book. But occasionally you do end up at an event where either you kind of arrange to go there or what have you, and they don't have your book. It's a real bummer, just telling you that it's a bummer and that it does happen, and that in the case of an official event, you can talk, complain to your publisher, talk to your publicist so that it doesn't happen again. And then in the case of kind of more unofficial events, you can talk to them so that it doesn't happen again. Talk to them politely and nicely after the event, either the event or the bookseller, to rectify it in the future. So those are really kind of the things that might come up in an event that I wanted to warn you about, but I hope this was helpful in terms of like the concrete things you should do before and at an event, both in terms of what to bring as well as how to prepare yourself socially. Really my number one piece of advice, as I've said, is to take deep breaths, go into an event with an open mind, content with sometimes being by yourself, actually savoring the moments when you can take a break and be by yourself. Because when you're introverted and you're anxious, events can be kind of a nightmare and really exhausting. But if you take it easy, I promise you can have a lot of fun. And you are there to be on panels. So really think about preparing for those panels, being your best self at the event, and not worrying too much about all of that social stuff. But also, if you take it easy with the social stuff and don't place, you know, too many expectations on it, you can be pleasantly surprised. I really like that when I've kind of gone with the flow, like a cool kid, I've ended up meeting amazing new people and, you know, you do end up at dinner with cool people and, you know, having drinks with someone in the hotel bar until like, you know, 10, 11, midnight. God, that makes me sound like such a grandma. That, oh, it's so late. You kind of go where the flow takes you and you can end up having a wonderful time. I'm going to cover how to actually handle panels in another video. Let me know down below in the comments any questions that you have about attending events or about being on a panel. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I will make more content about kind of the nitty gritty of going out and about being an author and promoting yourself in your book. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and happy writing.